Good afternoon, guys. We are back with another one. Today, it is everything tense. <laughs> <laughs> These two jokers right here. Uh, we're here at Trent's behind the barn. So if you guys seen any of the uncuts, that's, that's, that's the barn right there. But uh, we're out here. We've got wall tents, like big canvas wall tents, to uh, sill tarp wall tents from seek outside to canvas cutters to the whole gambit so we're gonna go ahead and go through everything you need for an elk camp whether you're gonna have a big party hunt during the winter during the late season rifle snow to a ultralight bivy sack oh, wow. backpack setup so with that let's jump into this all right guys we're grading tents today on comfort packability and practicality and uh, this is a little bro cribs edition we got 11 shelters from wall tents down to bivy sack. So let's check this first one out. Welcome to my home. This is not gonna be your bivy tent, okay? This is not gonna be your uh, packing it in, but man, when it's so nasty of weather, when it's a uh, big group. Yeah, big like group. Bear camp is awesome. We've used it a ton in bear camp, wall tents. Um, and then you got a cook shack. The comforts of home about this one. So I would rate overall comfort, this is 9.5 out of 10. Yeah. It's plush. Yeah. Yeah. It can get a little hot when the sun's out, so that's the 0.5 that I don't like about this tent. Um, pitch it in the shade. Pitch it in the shade. Overall setup. Setup was good. Four guys took us 16 minutes, um, and we kind of fumbled around figuring out which was ridge poles, which wasn't. And it's uh, not bad. Practicality. If you can drive to camp, throw it us up, and you got the space. It's pretty practical. All right, so size of this, this is a footprint is 12 feet wide, 18 feet long. This is made by Salem Tent and Awning. I think it's 14, code. Oh, 14? 14 by 18. 14 by 18. Overall weight, a buttload. It's, yeah, with everything involved, I think it's like 160 pounds, somewhere in there. Yep. It's, it's heavy. Next up, guys, this little cutie here, don't look at the floor. So obviously this is not one of our tents. So a lot of these tents, we don't have the rain flies on just to keep them kind of cool when we're checking them out. A lot of these all have rain flies for them, but here is a dome tent you can actually stand up in. Took us six minutes. Six minutes to set up. Wasn't that bad. As far as like snow load, if you have super bad weather, eh. this one's going to be a little sketch. So yeah, comfort. Um, I'm going to say this is going to be about a seven. You're going to need a heater if you're in some cold weather, if you're in the rain. Definitely probably a tarp and string kind of getting all the water off of it. But this will sleep four guys. I would say comfortably four guys, yeah. And you can have your gear and stuff in here. And that'll be another big thing that we talk about as we go down the line. It's like some places you can sleep, but putting your gear is a whole different story, especially when the weather, rain, and you're packed in or something of that nature. But this, pretty plush. Still keep it in the back of the truck. You're not gonna pack this in anywhere probably. It's probably not. Practicality, it's a lot easier on the budget than what a canvas wall tent is. Still lots of room to stand up and uh, pretty easy use. I mean, honestly, we deployed it quick. If you need to move camp, roll this thing back up, go down the road, six minutes later, you're back up operating. Okay, so we have the Seek Outside Courthouse. Hello, governor. And this is all in sleeve. We've been talking and looking at the tents. This gets people's choice, I think, award for yep. tent of the setup. So Yeah, this practicality, um, whether you're base camping from the truck, whether you're backpacking with three guys in cold weather, this is kind of the do-it-all. The only drawback is footprint, and some of the backcountry might be a challenge in steep ground. But come on in. Oh, what you've got, you got a stove port here, so the stove goes in the middle of the tent, so it's not by the edges, so it's gonna, you know, Keep, be furthest away from the edges to catch and fire. not by the door. The one thing that uh, you gotta be careful, hot tents, and I've seen it happen before where you're wearing a puffy jacket, you're crawling into the tent, boom, your sleeve hits the stove pipe, melts it, you got pluck ducks everywhere in here. So I'm looking at this as a two and a half man. It's, so we slept three. Three men. Three really. I'm trying to think, fire here, a guy on each side. A guy on the end, basically you can do a guy across. A guy, on, a guy on the end. Guy down the side and then we had gear up here. So yeah, three man. And then, so another thing too with these tents like this is these poles are all obviously separate. So if you want to pack into a place, one guy, okay, you carry the stove and the poles, I'll carry the tent, vice versa. However it works, split up the weight. Uh, we've done that before too and it works pretty darn good. And setup wise, this took us about 15 minutes. It took a little while to figure out 
which way we were facing. But I know once you get rolling with it, when I've used it before, setup's under 10 minutes, pretty easy. Moving on, All right. Chief. All right, next up is the traditional teepee. Um, this one is a Kafaru. I've had this for, I don't know, probably 10 years. It's a four-man teepee that sleeps two, is how it works. I, two in gear yep. with a stove, if you want that, I would say. Trent and I have had some days in this tent. Had a few nights in this tent. So overall, this tent um, setup is a little bit more challenging. You gotta kind of piece it together. I'm sure if you do it a lot, you can get better at it, but figuring out the footprint size. Single pull, uh, the good thing about this in high winds, teepees do really well with just a single pull, everything drawn down, the wind, it shucks the wind pretty good. This does have a stove jack as well. It gets a little tight. Trent can attest that a sleeping bag on the stove in this particular tent can get a uh, little, little Western. $275. Um, cool thing, dry rack here. So with the stove, um, we've dried out boots, um, all of our gear up there. And uh, comfort wise, you can cook in this thing like we are right now, I'm sweating. So um, overall, practicality is a pretty strong, I'm gonna give this about a seven or eight, two guys to backpack in. Um, if you're gonna stay, you got nasty weather, this is a good choice. Comfort, pretty solid. You are on the ground, so you gotta bring a ground cloth, something like that. Um, you, if you, and you gotta set up on a rise, you don't wanna set up in a goalie, because all that water will run in into the, inside the tent. So, But overall, pretty solid choice. All right, so this is called the little bug out by Seek Outside, right? Yeah. So this is kind of interesting because it's got this opening. It's got a zipper over on the side for either ventation or you could get into it from a different place. So kind of cool. It's a little bit more versatile. Come on in. It's not a stand up tent, let's just say. I'm going to give this tent a rating of a somewhere. It's good packability. The carbon fiber poles, they're not super heavy. So two guys could pack this tent pretty easily with a stove. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give it a strong 7.3. How about that? A 7.3. Okay, next. This is kind of what I take actually on most of our back countries. This is the size of tent that I would take. I also have a copper spur, it's called, but um, this is a Nemo Dragonfly is what this is called. Cool thing about it is once you get it all set up, I can take this thing, I can turn it, like if it's a real rocky situation or something, I can actually figure out exactly the best spot if there's only one good spot where I'm gonna be laying in there. I try to just kind of get that etched out before I actually do anything. You don't have to stake this part down. The, the rain fly that goes on top, actually you stake that down. I've been in some pretty decent rainstorms and it's actually been awesome. So I mean, I'm gonna, We've waited all day in Colorado just and sleeping in this, just staying it all day because it was pouring down rain. So I'm gonna give this a, uh, I'm gonna give it an 8.4. Strong 8.4 too. All right, so this is my choice of shelter that I've been running the last few years for backpack hunts. Um, they rained as a two man, it is one man for me. Um, this is the Nemo Recurve. Cool thing about this tent, it's got a tub floor in it and a built in uh, vestibule. So there's, this is the only part to it. There's. There's not a separate layer or anything like that. Um, single, single wall, and it's trekking pole. So it's a super lightweight package, good footprint. I can sit up, sit up like this, wake up in the morning, cook my food right here. And um, overall, I've had it in some pretty nasty weather. All has been good in the wind and the rain. Um, I'm gonna give this for a backpack tent. Um, I've ran the, the tarp and similar type setup where it's about the same weight, not as comfortable. So I'm gonna give this an 8.8. .8. Precursor to all the tents that I've ever owned for backpacking, this is the Marmot EOS 1. I don't think they still make this tent, but they, I know that they make some similar tents. The cool thing about this tent was the budget. I think I paid $150 for this tent. It's a pound and a half on trail weight. Um, this one too is a freestanding, so the only stakes you're gonna to have to do is your vestibule, so if you're in real rocky terrain, uh, easy to set up. The only drawback, you get in here, not much wiggle room. But, um, got a place so I can put my packs here, put my boots on the other side. When the vestibule's on, I can reach over, access all my gear on the outside here, put this back up, ready to rock. Um, just for the I would say durability, weight, and all that. This is gonna 
about an 8.2 on the scale. It's, uh, it's very practical. It does well in weather and uh, it's a good economical choice for backpacking. This brings us to the old tried and true right here. I've had this thing for, man, how long? Six years. Six years probably. And anyway, I still use the old same Dominator. It's a canvas cutter. It's a company that just makes like personal shelters out of canvas and they also do them. We'll get to this later. That's also canvas cutter too. But honestly, if there's a pad on the bottom, I actually have a blow up pad here that I put in into it after I get it to where I want it, you know, obviously because this whole thing rolls up into a, a bundle. It's got straps and it's just a big ball. But at the same time, I've slept in this probably more than anything on this whole lot and for longer periods of time. And it's great for if you're going to be kind of in a truck camp, but yet still mobile. So we'll just bust them out at night, you know, and we'll drive as far as we can. Say we're headed to a different state to hunt. We'll jump out of the truck, try to get four hours of sleep. Just throw the canvas cutter on the ground, open it up, jump in, sleep for a few hours, roll it back up, throw it in the truck and go. Super durable stuff. And I've been actually in some pretty heavy rainstorms and stuff with that. And I just take, roll it over the top of me. It's got huge zippers. You zip up and I just keep a little vent for my, for my air on the side. And it's, uh, it's, the, it's the easiest way, in my opinion, to do a quick camping so the the little sister to mine is this one and i've never used it yet so i can't really speak i have a see how wide that one is it's pretty pretty good size this is pretty narrow it's gonna be and i'm a small guy kind of petite so this is not gonna probably fit me very well so got the uh the poles in here as well so the poles what they're gonna do is keep that whole air above you it's a cool, I, I like the concept. I think if it, if they made one in a size a little bit larger, I would probably go with it. But for one, it's super, it's not as easy to get in with the poles, but it still suits a, a great purpose. Uh, Wyatt, actually, he has my son. I gave him the one that, the, that I got from Canvas Cutter and he loves it. So, but anyway, great for Vivian. But it, the cool thing about this is you could put your sleeping bag and bedroll and everything in it and actually take it with you, Bivy, you know, um, um, backpack. That's the cool thing between these two. Okay, last in the lineup for all those minimalist guys, it's gonna be a bivy sack and tarp setup. Um, I ran a different tarp setup in a bivy sack before. This one I haven't ran with a just normal A-frame style to it, but it's enough room for two people. Come on in here. So this is a Jimmy Tarp bivy sack, it's just a waterproof sack. Got a quilt, my pad in there, but you could definitely on nice weather get away with two guys sleeping in here. Room for your gear and uh, all that. Um, pretty easy setup. We've got four stakes and then uh, two end cap poles, trekking poles. Uh, pretty versatile setup. If you're in uh, one of those surprise rain showers, thunder showers, or even snow, it's going to be a little bit colder, so you don't have end cap closure. But overall, it's a pretty good shelter for those ultralight minimalist guys. Um, practicality, pretty high, pretty easy setup. I would rank this like an 8.2. I'm going to opt for a tent if I can, just for the close proximity and weight, and uh, being not having to be on the ground. So overall, it's a pretty cool setup. So guys, I hope this kind of provided some value to you. Um, boatload of tents. Yeah, I'm going through 11 different shelters. There's a lot of different uses, a lot of different applications across this. There's definitely some favorites that we, we've found over the years that work good. But you know, overall you've got budget, you've got what the weather's gonna be and how much space you need. From there, you can kind of figure it out. Um, and you might find that you think you're a bivy, bivy sack guy you go do it and you're like, absolutely not. I don't like bugs. I don't like the ground. I want a freestanding tent like that Nemo that Trent rocks. So uh, hopefully this gave you a little bit of insight as to what shelter to look for, what are the features you need and uh, get you out this fall chasing out. Guys, if this has any value to you at all, if you're back east, if you're even just thinking about going hunting or just backpacking and camping, if this has some value to you, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe to our channel. We'd really, really appreciate it. But um, this was a fun time. It was kind of fun to do. We've been wanting to do this for a while. So it's hopefully helped you um, on your tent endeavor. Tent endeavor? It's a thing. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a, a thing. thing. It's a thing. No worries over nickels and dimes. Over 
nine to five grind. I gotta get loose sometimes. In trouble, seeing all the signs, but it gets me high. 